In a world full of distractions, there is one big question on every dog owner's lips. How do I become more than just the person holding the other end of the leash? We all get dogs with a dream in mind, a vision of the future. And if right now your everyday reality isn't quite that picture you had in mind, you are in the right place. It really doesn't have to be this way. You absolutely can and will be more to your dog than just the person who gets in between them and the world. The key is you need to be more sexy. More sexy than the neighbourhood cats. More sexy than the jogger in the park. More sexy than that half-eaten hamburger they just found on the floor. And yes, even more sexy than the dog across the road. I'm Tom. And I'm Lauren. Together Together we're we're Absolute Dogs. Dogs. And you're listening to the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast, the podcast that teaches you how to be the very best dog owner that your dog could ever wish for. So one of the big areas that I think people come to us regularly for, that people touch base with us on, that people I think genuinely need and desperately need sometimes is actually optimism and not just for the dogs, actually optimism for their people and for the people. And I think it's something that we do and we've done and we've kind of always done for quite a long time. And that's something that we should definitely consider, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so the, the key here is that to really unlock real life transformations, to really unlock like next level relationship, What you've got to think about is looking after both ends of the lead, looking after yourself as a dog owner, especially if you own what we would call a naughty but nice dog, a dog that might bark and lunge at things, they might get easily distracted, they might chase things, you name it, they can do all kinds of crazy things. Um, You know what, you've got to look after yourself because that is going to allow you to get the momentum that you need to really transform their behaviour for the better. So I think the the funny thing is, the comical thing in so many ways is that actually we train our dogs we work on concepts we think hard on concept training and we we, guard our dogs we we really guard our dogs and we think about it we're thoughtful about this Mm -hmm. we understand that actually this is important and yet we don't think about maybe concept training in ourselves we don't think about all of the concepts that we want to grow in our dogs the fact that we sometimes want to guard ourselves actually these things are relevant and they're real and they're things we should be considering right now absolutely so with that we've got some strategies for you that we've kind of developed and implemented over the years that really have allowed us to, um, you know, no matter what our dogs might throw at us and no matter what struggles we're transforming, actively kind of remain in a really happy, fulfilled, energized state so that we can really push on and really help our dogs even more. So let's start with the first tip. And the first tip is that just as we consider optimism in our dogs, you know, teaching them that when something new happens, when something gets thrown at them they see it as a good thing something to think that it's a non-event it's nothing to worry about we need to actively grow that in ourselves right and that's something that we can grow in ourselves i think that's hugely empowering to know straight away this we can grow in ourselves this is not we are not fixed beings we are mortal and that means that like for me that that actually all of these things that we're living we we um i didn't really think about the mortal thing i was thinking we are living (laughs) right like we are we are we are living and because we are living and we're we're here we're changeable and i love the idea of that because we both work with so many people who aren't they they have a fixed mindset they have a a space of actually we're done we can't change this this is us as we are and it doesn't matter whether you're you're sort of eight or 80 Mm -hmm. actually we're still able to evolve and grow and and be flexible to adaptation and change absolutely and as humans what we often find ourselves very able to do is talk about all of our weaknesses all of the things that we'd love to be you know be more optimistic be more calm right um and yet Really, you know, if we were talking about dogs, we'd be saying, well, if you want something, build it. If you want something, grow it. And this is what we need to apply to ourselves. So, you know, we optimism in the face of especially a naughty but nice dog that might throw things at you, it's powerful. And the reason why is because let's take a, a scenario. Let's think about a dog that it, it, it's your young dog. You go out for a walk and they bark at another dog. And you could that would be a moment that would really kind of test your optimism and you might find yourself saying oh my gosh i've got a i've got a dog dog reactive dog again uh you know they they're they're not going to be able to interact with other dogs my walks are going to be stressful this is just going to get worse and worse and worse the reality is that no they just barked at another dog once 
And that's it. And this does not have to be a predictor of your future. And I think, you know, part of being optimistic is really making sure that you're asking yourself the right questions. Like, we, we can easily jump into telling ourselves a story about how this is going to pan out. But actually, if we ask ourselves the question, what's the problem and, really? And, and it is. It's ask yourself the right questions and sometimes have the ability to interrupt yourself. Mm. Because actually, we all know when we go down that sort of, like, um, thought pattern, um, actually, it's not a healthy one. So, yeah, what is the problem really what's the problem really and in asking yourself what's the problem really well it's like well my dog actually just barked once at a dog and they've never done it before and then you're like oh this isn't as the kind of dire as i thought this isn't as pessimistic as i thought it would be and so i guess within what you know, what growing optimism is it's about making sure that you interrupt yourself when you find yourself starting a story that that is not going to serve you well and then secondly ask yourself a more a more empowering and realistic question and i think when you ask yourself more empowering and realistic questions you create a more empowering and 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 an amazing future right yeah. like the, the options and the possibilities are there because what you can do is once you've answered the question what's the problem really and made sure that you're actually you know identifying what the obstacle in your path is you can then ask yourself you know where's the opportunity here well the opportunity is that for the next few weeks i'm really going to invest in growing optimism in my young dog and, and there's and, such a great opportunity there right like i think that's the thing that people miss there's so many yeah. great opportunities and actually sometimes we look at the problem rather than actually see the um, amazing opening yeah. that wasn't necessarily there before and in doing that in investing in optimism and growing optimism in, in your young dog for the next few weeks because you've had this this event that happened that triggered you to do this you'll probably find that they'll be even more optimistic as a result of that and actually instead of that event leading you down a path of of deterioration down a path of my dog's going to be dog dog reactive dog dog aggressive and whatever else actually that was the moment that the trajectory moved upwards the moment that the needle moved and you've got a much stronger dog as a result of that and it's just from asking yourself very different questions now that's I've, I think empowering for us as humans um, let alone um, empowering our dog training I think that is a really empowering state and place yeah. to be in okay so second tip second tip is actually going to be some self care so mm -hmm. actually acknowledge and be aware of us being able to self care not only for our dogs actually self care for us as individuals mm -hmm. now both you and I are aware of this both you and I uh, acknowledge this lots of people say oh my god you guys have so many different things going on you've mm -hmm. got AOK9 you've got absolute dog you have your own lives and family and and mm. things happening and yep. yet you can still manage to do it all actually i think one thing that people probably under acknowledge is the importance of self-care and self-care doesn't have to be some big task like go to the spa for four days i mean it doesn't have to be some major yeah. thing that you can't you don't um, have to like, change tackle location or, or handle buy something it, new it you might be it right now sit in the sunshine chance would be a fine thing let's say mm -hmm. at the moment but sit in the sunshine for five minutes and just top up your vitamin d or it could be as simple as cheers to life in the morning and drink a huge glass of water with lemon in it yeah. it could be something as simple as actually saying right seven o'clock i'm done and i'm cutting off right now like that's yeah. enough for me today and um, whatever it might be for you right absolutely even down to reflecting on just how far you've come right and and really asking yourself that question what are the wins that i've had in the past few weeks because often we don't necessarily note them and often we, well, most of the time, we don't celebrate them. So just taking that moment to reflect and that in itself is self-care. Now, I know that we're lucky enough to work with lots of different dog trainers and we've just written a super cool book, in fact, mm. for um, dog trainers. And aspiring um, dog trainers, yeah. All, all over the world. And people who want transformation in their yeah. training, people who want sort of that next level. And this is like one of the areas that absolutely it comes throughout the book that we, mm. we talk about actually how we maintain the cool energy that we maintain, how yeah. we maintain the optimism that we maintain, how we, how we stay in that space right? exactly and how we inspire that in others so that if for, for those of you who are professional dog trainers listening you know how do you inspire the level of optimism and energy and motivation in your students that are really going to drive them to get real life results because this isn't rocket science right getting dog training transformation turning struggles to strengths it is not rocket science all we ask you to do is play the games right play the game see the real life result and so really often it's that that other end of the the lead or the leash that um that is holding that transformation back and so we have to become leaders of ourselves in order to become leaders of of our dogs and it's it's really interesting to reflect on how that's kind of gone full circle in that it used to be all about being the pack leader and then people were like no 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 we don't do leaders there's no such thing as dominance and absolutely 
that is not a um, that is not a, a system that is useful in thinking about dog behavior and that's a story for another day but what we can't lose the 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 fact of is that actually when when a dog owner is a great leader of themselves and they're a great leader of that journey and they're a great leader of that dog's transformation that unlocks real life results and so we have to do some self reflection and some self growth in this and i think that's the the cool area that we get to be in i mean especially um yeah for sure um throughout i know the the book for example mm. we grow like yeah. we we grow and we give the other many other people the opportunity to grow now if anyone wants to get hold of the book tom how are they going to get hold of it you can get hold of the book by heading to absolutedogs.me forward slash transformation book. So Look at you. Absolute dogs dot me forward slash transformation book. And you'll be able to get a copy of the brand new book. It's for those of you who want to be great leaders of yourselves and your dog. It's for those of you who maybe dream of one day working with dogs. You aspire to be a dog trainer or just work with dogs or in any capacity. Maybe you just like to know that little bit more. Maybe mm. you're one of those people that's just hungry for learning. Maybe learning makes you want to bounce out of bed in the morning. Yeah. Maybe you feel that you need a bit of inspiration and pick me up. Maybe you want to be your own dog's home educator and you want to be the best trainer for your own dog that you you can be especially um when we know so many classes um are are being potentially postponed so actually you can be at home with your dog so a cool 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 read for you okay so the next tip that we have for you is just as we think about our dog's bucket and we think about how things pay into that bucket and you know they overflow at times we've got to be aware that actually we have a bucket as well and this has some significance for a couple of different reasons firstly There'll be some days where your dog's throwing a lot at you and that, you know, things aren't quite going to plan necessarily. And you need to be guarded about what situations you put yourself in, you put yourself and your dog in, because chances are, if your bucket's full and your dog's bucket's full, it's probably not going to go very well. The second thing that we need to think about is that sometimes actually our buckets are full as humans because of things unrelating to our dogs, right? Um, And so it might be, for example, you've had a crazy day at work or family's thrown a lot at you or, uh, you know what, 2020, there was plenty of opportunity to, um, to, for our buckets to, to be filled by external things that were out of our control. And what we always think about in, in these situations is if our bucket's really full and maybe we feel like our patience might, be, might not be what it normally is, Maybe if you're not feeling great, those aren't the days to to do really kind of intense training with your dogs where you're trying to, you know, transform their struggles. Maybe those are the days where you just play the games that you and your dog enjoy and that you get a lot of success in because dogs are really smart. I remember when um, when Illy was um, young, if I if it was like around exam time when I was like studying, she I get really intense about about learning and I'm like a, I'm you pacing. Can't imagine, <laughs> people can't imagine that at all. Tom. I'm pacing. I'm reciting things. I'm getting really involved in it. I wasn't stressed. I was just, that's just my, my process. Um, and um, and in those times, Illy would literally be like, I'm not interacting with you. <laughs> I'm going to my bed. You are, you're Weird. just too intense for me. Um, and that, and, and if I try to force that interaction and be like, no, now we're going to, you know, do some loose leash walking training. I don't think that would have gone very well. And we see this where people's buckets get very full as dog owners. And then that that tends to coincide with the time where you're like, enough is enough, I'm transforming this now. But that's probably not the best time to start because your bucket's very full. That's probably the time to get really intense about a plan, working out which games you want to play. What are your next three weeks gonna look like? And then start the plan tomorrow. (laughs) And I think that's such a big thing, right? Like that actually just acknowledging it, acknowledging that this is big, acknowledging that this is a thing. Yeah. Actually, even just acknowledging that is, is um, well, it's, it's you, you get to free up a lot of your headspace, I think. And that's really cool. Okay, yeah. so next tip, I've got a couple of tips here that I think are both really cool for optimism in, in in you as owners and also actually um it helps in in dog training too so mine would be control the controllable and actually keep coming back to that control the controllable so actually not trying to control things that are out your control whether it's the weather and i know for me being a a dog trainer a competitor um and i sometimes really don't like the weather in the uk and that's something i can't control so i need to control my state which is really important so how i feel bouncing around or um need to calm down whatever it is i can control my state but i can't control the weather and so actually actually taking taking charge of that a little bit and the second one for me is actually finding easy things to to celebrate here so i think those two for me they're both kind of like 
little tips, but they are they have big impact. So they're little things that move the needle. So controlling the things that you can have a handle on, because so many people in dog training they try and control stuff that isn't yeah. under their sort of um, they, they can't they can't grasp at. Don't try and control other dog owners. Let's not try and control um, what another dog is doing. That's not within our grasp, right? Yeah, and we we often find ourselves getting into these patterns. And you know, I say find ourselves. What I mean is humans find themselves getting into these patterns of you know a problem happens. But then what we do, I don't know, let's say there's this certain crazy dog in the car park, in, in the park with a really like irresponsible owner and they just let them run up to your dog repeatedly and the dog's not good with other dogs. And, and, and we, what, what tends to happen then is we, we, as humans, we then want to spend a lot of energy complaining and moaning about the problem. And then we repeatedly go back to the same park. The same thing keeps happening and more energy goes into complaining and about it. We keep then rehearsing this same pattern, this same over and over. And just like, like you said then, and Matt and I were talking about this the other day and we said like, God, if some people put the amount of time into their own sort of um, focus and, mm -hmm. and growing themselves as they did in about complaining about sometimes others or the scenario, yeah. wow, we would be in an impact empowered state like yeah. wow we would be in an empowered place yeah and that and the key is that actually it's you know control the controllable how about we just dis see this as an opportunity to discover a new walking area you know that's probably even better because you're now opening your awareness up to new places that you can take your dog where your dog could learn new skills and it's for certain it, it well, it's for sure better in the sense that you're not going to have that experience so yeah. actually let's control the, dog can't the controllable be in two places at once there you go and that's that's something that i think sometimes it's in embracing that um, opportunity for growth mm -hmm. rather than the opportunity for finding ourselves in a bit of a victim state of we yeah. can't do anything about this. And I think it's very easy to fall into that state of we can't do anything about this, we're helpless and this is the state we find ourselves in and actually no, control that. And then I had to add on there just the the easy wins because I think that neither of those necessarily are, 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 are tips on their own. I think they're a nice combination. Like find easy wins in between, like yeah. find an easy win, whether that is you spoke to someone new in the petrol station or whether that is your dog just did a sit the first time you asked or whether that is your dog's just started to retrieve or whether you played an easy three minute game from the training academy or from sexy than a squirrel or one of the challenges and your dog literally just rocked it like actually they're just they're killing it they're yeah. crushing it you guys are doing amazing whatever it might be pick an easy win yeah absolutely and so final 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 tip um is um is is be really careful you as game changers listening to this you're very careful about making sure that nobody puts labels on your dog and that you don't put labels on your dog. Apply the same level of dedication and care to yourself. Don't put labels on yourself. Don't let other people put and labels on be you. Be careful about the language that you use because I think sometimes we give permission for someone to, to say something and then we wonder how that happened. So, for example, um, I'll always say that I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm doing stuff, I'm doing stuff. And, and people are like, oh, are, are you busy? And you can easily get into that, oh, I'm really busy. And I'm yeah. like, yes, I'm busy and I love it. So be careful also of how you talk about yourself yeah. and actually then how other, others can interpret and then run with that. So for me, being able yeah. to interrupt it and say, no, actually, I like this. This is how I choose to be. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so an example might be, and we, we catch and kind of work with and coach people um, through this all the time. Um, and that is when we, we're currently stuck in a, a behavior, we're stuck in a pattern. Maybe it's a pattern of um, you're, you're avoiding doing something, you're avoiding doing something really important. And you're in that pattern of avoiding doing something really important. And what happens is humans will say, oh, I'm an avoider. I'm a procrastinator. No, you are not that. You are currently stuck in a pattern of that. And yeah, that but, is, that's but that, the state that you're yeah, in. If you make that your identity, you're never going to move from that. So actively be really careful about even down to the difference of, um, you know, I am something versus, you know what, I'm currently stuck in a pattern of, yeah. of doing X, Y, Z, making X, Y, Z choices. It is the language we use about ourselves. Like sometimes we're so disempowering mm, yeah. in the language we use about us. Now, if we can't use empowering language about us, and well, I mean, I think that's quite scary, right? Yeah. Like, if like we can't we, do it about ourselves. Like, no one's going to do it for us necessarily. Like, <laughs> let's let's think. Of, I am a badass. How about you, Tom? What are you? I, I am a fitness freak. <laughs> I am a rock star. Like I literally am rocking it around the kitchen. Yeah. How about you anymore? You got any more? I in there? am addicted to transforming my dog struggles. I am super <laughs> charging each and every day. Yeah. And the cool thing is with that guys that then, you know, when your identity is something way more empowering, it goes beyond maybe the choices that you made yesterday. You are this person and in turn your future choices will get guided by that. If you're 
current identity is a procrastinator, what direction your future your future choices are going to be directed in? Do you think? No. Right. I think it's big and I think this is really huge. One one final, final, final point or um, add on to this and I think this is really cool because it's something I caught myself doing yesterday and you'll find yourself doing this and having these patterns with people. Now, I was with somebody and this person was like, oh, did you hear about this bad thing? And then they followed it up with, oh, did you hear about this other bad thing? Mm. And I, I kind of went to get into it because it's like a it's like a pattern of like interest Intrigue, and gossip yeah. and that sort of like world that you can kind of get intrigued mm. into. Um, and then I caught myself doing it. And instead of getting into it, what I said is, oh, no, I hadn't heard that. But did you hear about this person? They've just got a job mm -hmm. and actually they're doing really, really well. Mm. And I'm so happy for them because they've been so unhappy in their current work and their new work they're really excited about. And I think that's really important that we yeah. also find the conversations that we're in and decide whether we run with them or not. Mm. Because actually, do we want to live in that judgy, um, gossipy, sort of languagey place? And I think for me, that doesn't help my optimism. So mm. let alone that person's, it's actually directly affecting me. So yeah. having those answers like, um, no, I hadn't heard that. And what I did hear was this mm. and turning it into something more positive or, oh, no, I wasn't aware of that. And this is where I am. So actually, I think having those lines ready is very, very empowering yeah absolutely so guys as you can see all of the things that we've just talked about they're all things that we talk about in relation to your dogs and your dog training all the time and yet they're absolutely applicable to ourselves and what we've got to do is we've got to apply the same level of dedication the same high standards that we apply to commitment. how we interact with our dogs like, and commitment it is commitment and, and the other thing here guys is this is going to empower your whole year yeah. this is going to help you to lead a brand new year this is going to be a good space to be in yeah and make you, you know, make you above and beyond what might happen out of your control in the world or that your dog might throw at you. You are a leader. You're a leader of that relationship and you are a leader of your dog. You're also a rock star. You're, you, you're a rock you're star. You're crushing it. it. You're killing it. I am it. a leader. <laughs> so with that, guys, that's your new identity. We will see you next week in the next episode of the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast. In the meantime, stay, stay sexy. sexy. Hey, before you go, have you taken part in the worldwide Sexier Than a Squirrel Challenge? It's a 25-day online video program, huge energy, amazing community, and over 6,000 people are already taking part. The only question is, you know where you are today, where do you want to be 25 days from now? Head to absolutedogs.me forward slash sexy.